In this lesson, I am going to discuss kernel of linear transformations. Suppose that T is a linear transformation from V to W. So this is my V and this is my W. If I collect all the elements in V that gets mapped to the zero vector in W, so take note that this is the zero vector in W, that set is called your kernel of T and is denoted by ker T. For example, suppose that our linear transformation is a function from the set of all three by two matrices to the set of two by two matrices, and it maps a matrix A to its transpose. Let us find the kernel of T. So by definition, we are looking for all vectors in V, but our vectors in V would be matrices in M32, such that it gets mapped to your zero vector in M23. What will be the zero vector in M23? I will call it 0, 2, 3. So this is just a zero matrix with two rows and three columns. If you look at our T of A equals 0, 2, 3, T of A by definition is a transpose. Since I am interested with A, if I get the transpose of this, I will get the matrix A. So this means that A is the transpose of 0, 2, 3. That is just a 0 matrix with size 3, 2. So therefore, what have we seen here? The kernel of T is just the 0 matrix in M32. So it only consists of a single element. Let us look at the kernels of the zero and identity transformation. Our zero transformation is a linear transformation that takes all of the vectors in V to the zero vector W. So it means that if this is your V and this is your W, everything here, gets mapped to the zero vector in W, which means that kernel of T is the entire vector space V. What about the identity transformation? The identity transformation sends a vector in V to itself. What would be the kernel of the identity transformation? So we are interested in vectors V, which gets mapped to the zero vector of course, this is in V, but T of V by definition is V. So therefore, the only vector that gets mapped to the zero vector is the zero vector. So therefore, the kernel of T is just also a single element, the zero vector. Here's another example. We want to find the kernel of the projection from R3 to R3 represented by this. So notice that this transformation takes a vector a1, a2, a3 This is my vector a1, a2, a3 It takes it to this vector a1, a2, 0. So therefore, this is a projection of a vector in R3 to your two-dimensional plane over here. So for the kernel of T, we are interested in vectors in R3, a1, a2, a3, such that it gets mapped to the zero vector in R3. So let's look at T of A1, A2, A3, which gets mapped to the zero vector. By definition, T of A1, A2, A3 is A1, A2, 0. So this means that A1 and A2 must be equal to 0. So hence, we get that the kernel of T will consist of vectors whose 
first and second coordinates are 0, and the third coordinate can be any number. So let's just call it A. So that's your kernel of T. We can also say that this is the span of the vector 0, 0, 1. So notice here that the kernel of T is a subspace of R3 because the span of a vector is a subspace. Here's another example. We have T of A1, A2. It gets mapped to an element in R3 as follows. So we are interested in elements in R2, which gets mapped to your zero vector in R3. Just like what we did earlier, T of A1, A2 by definition is A1 minus 2, A2, 0, negative A1. And this must be equal to the zero vector. So therefore... We have that A1 minus 2A2 is equal to 0 and negative A1 is equal to 0. Which means that both A1 and A2 has to be equal to 0. So that means that the only vector which gets mapped to the 0 vector is the 0 vector. Therefore, kernel of T is just the 0 vector. Another example, let us find the kernel of this transformation from R3 to R2 wherein an element in R3 gets mapped to A times that element. By definition, the kernel of T is the collection of all elements in R3. Let's call that X. Such that it gets mapped to the zero vector in R2. But by definition, t of x is equal to ax. And what is this set class? The set of all x such that ax is equal to 0. This is actually the null space of a, right? So let us compute the null space of a. If we transform a to its ref, we get the matrix... 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1. And therefore, this means that this means that we have a free variable at the third column, right? Because I do not have a pivot at the third column. Our pivots are at x1, x2. So let's say that x3 is equal to r. This means that x2 is equal to negative x3 or negative r and x1 is equal to x3 or r. So therefore, this set here is the set of all matrices wherein the first coordinate is r, second coordinate is negative r, r. Where r is any real number and this can be written as r times the Vector 1, negative 1, 1. Or the span of 1, negative 1, 1. Here is an important theorem regarding the kernel. The kernel of any linear transformation is always a subspace of your domain of V. In our previous examples, we have shown that the kernel of T is the span of certain vectors, correct? And therefore, it is a subspace. To prove this, we have to use the subspace test. That is, we have to show that it is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So this means that if we start with V1 and V2 in the kernel of T, we want to show that their sum is also in the kernel of T. To show that V1 plus V2 is in the kernel of T, we want to show that T of V1 plus V2 is also equal to the zero vector in W. So let us compute the image of V1 and V2 under the linear transformation T. 
since t is a linear transformation, this is the same as t of v1 plus t of v2. But t of v1 is equal to what? It's equal to the zero vector because v1 is in kernel of t. Similarly, t of v2 is equal to the zero vector in w. The reason for this is that v1 and v2 are in kernel of t. And of course, zero vector plus zero vector is the zero vector. So therefore, we have shown that v1 plus v2 is in the kernel of t. Next, we want to show that it is closed under scalar multiplication. To do that, let's get an arbitrary real number and a vector v in the kernel of t. We want to show that c times v is again in the kernel of t. To do this, we have to get t of cv. We want to show that this is equal to 0 for it to be in kernel of t. This is C times T of V because C is just a scalar and T is a linear transformation. And this is C times T of V is equal to 0 because V is in kernel of T. And this thing is the 0 vector. So therefore, we have shown that C times V gets mapped to the 0 vector, which means that CV is again in kernel of t. So that proves that the kernel of a linear transformation is a subspace of your domain v. Since we have already shown that the kernel of t is a subspace of your domain v, we can talk about its dimension. We call the dimension of the kernel of t to be the nullity of t and this is denoted by eta of t. Let us consider this example. This linear transformation takes a vector in R5 to R4 by multiplying A on the left. Let us find a basis for the kernel and the nullity of T. To find the kernel of T, we are interested in all X in R5 that gets mapped to the zero vector in R4. Let me call this zero four. T of x is again ax. So hence, to look for kernel of t, again, we are looking for the null space of the matrix A. So here is my A, and I already transformed this into its row echelon form. I have pivots at the first, second, and fourth column, so therefore I have Three variables at x3, let's call this r, and x5. Let's call it s. We have that x4 is negative 4 x5, so that's negative 4 s. x2 is x3, so that's r plus 2x5. So that's plus 2s. And lastly, x1 is equal to negative 2x3. So that's negative 2r plus x5. So that's s. Of course, here our x is x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So therefore, the kernel of T is the set of all elements of this form. You have negative 2R plus S, R plus 2S, Rx3 is R, Rx4 is negative 4S, and X5 is S, where R and S are real numbers. To find a basis for kernel of t, we have to separate the variables. This is negative 2r, r, r, 0, 0, plus everything which contains s, s, 2s, 0, negative 4s, s, 
And of course, this is now R times negative 2, 1, 1, 0, 0 plus S times 1, 2, 0, negative 4, 1. And therefore, this is now the span of the two vectors negative 2, 1, 1, 0, 0 and 1, 2, 0, negative 4, 1. Of course, since we only have two vectors and they are not scalar multiples of each other, these two are linearly independent. Therefore, the nullity of your transformation T is equal to 2. Now, in general, if our linear transformation is given by T of x equals AX, where A is a fixed matrix, the kernel of the linear transformation is the null space of A. And therefore, the nullity of the transformation is the same as the nullity of A. Recall that the nullity of the transformation is equal to the dimension of the kernel, but kernel of this transformation is the null space of A, and the null space of A is called the nullity of your matrix. For our last example, suppose that I have a fixed vector V112, and this linear transformation takes an element in R3, so U is an arbitrary element in R3, and I map it to its dot product with my fixed vector V. Let us find the kernel of TV. The kernel of TV is the collection of all U in R3 such that it gets mapped to the zero vector in R, and the zero vector in R is just the zero real number. But by definition, TV of U is V dot U. What is this set? The collection of all U such that V dot U is equal to zero. Notice that this is the same as the orthogonal complement of V. Let us find the orthogonal complement of V. We have 1, 1, 2. Let's say that u is equal to a1, a2, a3. This must be equal to 0. By definition, this is a1 plus a2 plus 2a3. So therefore, I have a free variable at a2 and a3. A1 is negative R minus 2S. So hence, our U is negative R minus 2S, RS. So this is equal to negative R, R0 plus negative 2S, 0S. This is R, negative 1, 1, 0. I am looking for elements which would span my kernel of T. This is S, negative 2, 0, 1. So therefore, the kernel of TV, which is the same as V perp, is the span of negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 2, 0, 1. Again, these two vectors are not linear combinations of each other, so therefore they are linearly independent. We can also say that the nullity of TV is equal to 2. In general, if V is an inner product space and V is a fixed element in V, the function tv from v to the set of real numbers defined by this, it maps a vector in v to the inner product of v with u. The kernel of this linear transformation would be all elements in v such that 
its image under the transformation TV is zero, where zero is the real number zero. However, TV of U is the inner product of V with U. But what is the set? The set of all vectors whose inner product with V is equal to zero. In other words, this is the set of all vectors that are orthogonal with V. This is V per. 